Hi, everybody, and welcome to the BC Wine Show and podcast. I'm Marnie Martin with Vista Wine Group, and I'm interviewing some of BC's top winemakers and industry pros as to how and why they do what they do and what they're up to next. So grab yourself a glass of wine, and I'll see you on the inside. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. You are going to love today's guest. Rob Hammersley is the owner and winemaker at Black Market Wine Company, located in the picturesque town of Caledon, BC, in the beautiful Okanagan Valley. He has viticulture and enology certificates from Washington State University and is WSET Level 3 certified. Him and his partner, Michelle, have three children and love creating handcrafted small lot BC wine. Welcome, Rob, to the BC Wine Show. Thanks for spending a few minutes with me today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, I, I know that you have been in the industry for quite a while, and um, I got a chance to come up and see your new tasting room this year, but I'm curious how you kind of got started in the wine industry to begin with. It's uh, Honestly, it's, it's a passion that just kind of went sideways on me, and uh, it's that old sort of snowball effect. I started off many years ago just as a consumer and, and someone who appreciated uh, wine. And I, I had this insatiable thirst for knowledge relating to anything to do with growing grapes, making wine, drinking wine. And uh, it just kind of went from there and I had uh, no, no way to stop or quell that, that passion. Um, anytime we go away on vacation, it would almost always involve a, a wine region of some sort in some part of the world. And uh, I, just, I just couldn't get enough. That's awesome. I love that, those kinds of stories. And I think, you know, that's a, that's a very important component to making good wine is, you know, loving it and having a passion for it, for sure. Absolutely. Um, so where did the name Black Market come from? How did you decide on that as a brand? That's got a pretty funny story, too. So we're, we're originally from Alberta. And when I started in this business, I was still living in Calgary and I was, uh, I was coming out here, um, you know, quite a few times uh, throughout the year to, to make wine. And you may or may not be aware of this, but it is still illegal to transport alcohol across most provincial borders in our wonderful country. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> that's, a, that's a whole other topic for, for a podcast. But Another day. <laughs> uh, and, uh, when we first started coming out to the Okanagan many years ago, we would uh, always try and seek out the smaller producers that, that wouldn't make it into the market in Alberta. So we would seek them out, we would buy cases and cases of wine, load up our car, and then smuggle it back across the border. And so <laughs> we were getting our own wine, our own contraband, and then doling it out to our friends. So we kind of became known as the, as the wine black marketeers. So when it came time to start our own winery, uh, that was an easy decision for us for, as far as the name goes. That's a great story. I love that. And um, it's obviously moved into um, all of the different names of the wines that you have as well. And you're having a lot of fun with that. So tell us about the wines that you have. And you've got a couple of different tiers. Um, you've got the unsanctioned series and then you've got your other wines as well. So let's talk about those. Yeah, so we have uh, we have our core portfolio, which was originally just five wines. So we had uh, two whites, Secret Society, which is a, a mystery blend. Collusion, which is a, our take on a white Bordeaux style. So it's the Sauvignon and Semillon. Then we do a rosé, and then we had two reds, uh, Syrah and the Syndicate, which is our, our red Bordeaux inspired blend. Uh, and then partway through our, our journey, um, we had, uh, it was actually started with, with Semillon. We had, uh, we barrel ferment and age our Semillon. And one year, one of the barrels just took on a life of its own. It was, it was just such a beautiful wine. I couldn't bring myself to blend it. And, uh, and as a small winery with, uh, with five different wines, that was already a lot of different wines for, for a small production facility like ourselves. And so I didn't really need another wine into the, uh, in the stable, but uh, it was just so good and so unique and distinctive that it needed its own bottle. So that's what started the Unsanctioned series. The whole concept of the Unsanctioned series is it, it's, it's really small lot stuff. It sounds kind of funny when we're 2000 case winery, it sounds funny to talk about small batches because everything we do is small batch. Um, right. The sanction series is extremely small batch. It's usually done in, in one or two barrel increments. So we're looking at 25 or 50 case lots. Wow. So that started the unsanctioned series. And now every year 
uh, and it changes every year. I'll pick out one or two or three or four barrels from, from all of our programs and choose to bottle those as varietal wines under the Unsanctioned series. Excellent. That's cool. And that you must have a, a real following for those wines because you're already sold out of all of them already, right? We, we do, yeah. And because they're in such limited quantity, um, they, they can sell out uh, quite quickly. In, in fact, we had a, a sellout of our Cab Sauve uh, from last year in 24 hours. Uh, Holy so, moly. Yeah. So the, the, whole, the whole idea for us in terms of where those wines are going to end up uh, is either Tasting Room or, or our newly launched wine club that's coming up this fall. So uh, that we want, we want our, our, our followers and, and the people that have been appreciating our wines uh, to have access to those wines and not have to try and wait till the summer because odds are they won't be available for, for pouring at the Tasting Room by then. Gotcha. So that's a brand new thing you guys are going to be implementing this year, the wine club? Yeah, so we've wanted to launch a wine club for, for quite a few years, um, but because our production is so small, we would often sell out of the wines uh, before we'd be able to include them in a wine club pack. So right. as our production's grown now, we have you know, you know, much higher production in a couple of our core wines. Um, we're we're going to be launching this fall with, uh, with a club that's going to uh, target sort of those really hard to find wines that uh, you won't find in a, in a store shelf or on a, a restaurant list. What about um, your wines that you have in store? What are maybe give me a couple of your favorites of the ones that you're actually producing this year? Sure. So we actually have uh, a few new wines uh, that we're we're getting into bottle in the next week or two. Um, three new wines to our portfolio. Uh, we're doing a varietal Sauvignon Blanc, which is unbelievably expressive uh, as far as that varietal goes. Um, we started working with a new vineyard in Naramata last year and. Uh, we were able to get quite a bit of, of extended hang time in the vineyard, which allowed for just this phenomenal development of flavors and aromas. Um, and it's got that nice electric acidity that you expect from Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, we're doing about 100 cases of that one, and that's going to be our newest unsanctioned series. Uh, we're also doing the first bottling of our estate-grown Merlot from 2018. Uh, we're doing about 70 cases of that, uh, and that's a beautifully rich and ripe, opulent style Merlot. Uh, our vines are 33 years old on our property here, so they're, they're naturally low yielding. So the, the berries that we do get are just wonderfully concentrated, great tannins, amazing flavors. So we'll be bottling the first vintage of that uh, coming out later this fall. Uh, and we're also creating, um, if you recall, our Secret Society white blend. Well, we're doing a Secret Society red blend for the 2018 vintage. Um, nice. So again, the blend will be a secret. We're not going to put it on the bottle. I think maybe <laughs> we'll probably spill the beans. But uh, the idea is to is to have a, a wine that's a little bit more approachable right out of the bottle than some of our other reds. A lot of our reds, I think, that my style of wine making is is as I'm looking for a bit of longevity in the bottle. And and when you when you have that as your target, you need to capture a little bit more from the wine making process up front to give it that ability to age in bottle. Um, and so when, when those wines are first released, um, you know, they might be a little bit tight, a little bit austere, maybe a little bit tannic, um, but you get rewarded with, the, with a bit of patience in terms of when you open those. So with the Secret Society, I'm looking for a wine that you can just purchase, take home, open and thoroughly enjoy. And are most of your wines purchased out of the tasting room or online or smaller boutique shops or are you in a, you know, in a lot of the stores in BC? It's a good mix, actually. So we we probably send about uh, twenty five percent of our wines to the Alberta market. Um, we actually started there because we were still living in Calgary when we launched our brand, and so we uh, we kind of had our feet on the ground there to support it. So we nice. do uh, probably about twenty five percent of our production in Alberta through stores and restaurants. Um, we also do uh, distribution in the Lower Mainland, mostly smaller boutique stores. Um, yep. We do have a couple of our wines available in the Savon uh, BQA stores. Um, and then the, the other 50% is through our website and uh, through our tasting room now. Excellent. That's great. So you guys have had some big changes this year. Um, you've obviously got a brand new tasting room, and I think I got there just as you were beginning to open it, but I've seen there's some new changes even still. So maybe just tell us what visitors can expect to find if they come and see you. Sure. We, uh, we offer a fairly chilled, laid-back experience. Um, our winery and tasting room are actually attached to our house, uh, so this is the space where we spend all of our time anyways. Uh, we have a beautiful patio outside uh, where we have room for, for three different groups to do their tastings. Um, kind of important during this, uh, this COVID time where, where people are, are generally preferring to be outdoors. 
Uh, we have some fantastic space outside. It's uh, nestled between our tasting room and the vineyard with uh, beautiful views of Skaha Lake. And our, our tastings are quite relaxed. Uh, you know, most people we're finding are spending about 30 to 45 minutes here. Um, you know, we kind of go at the pace of the customers. We're not, uh, we're not trying to force a program on them. Um, we offer all of our wines that, that we have available, we offer those for tasting. And uh, you can take as little or as much time as you'd like. So what do you see right now? I know COVID's been a really interesting thing this year. So do you see any particular changes to the BC trends because of COVID and what's kind of going on in the industry? I, I think so. Um, you know, this is the first year we've had a tasting room open. So, so, you know, maybe this is actually a benefit. I don't know, but we don't have any previous years to compare this year to. Right. We have talked to, to a number of our colleagues in the industry. And, and I think generally I'd say traffic is a little bit down from previous years, but for us, because this is the first season, every day is new and great for us. Um, but I, I think, uh, the, the concept of tasting by appointment, um, is something that I wouldn't mind seeing stay in, in the future. Uh, I think you're you're able to manage the flow of people into your tasting room, and and that's important for us because our, our space is small. So we we get full pretty quickly if we've got four or five groups here, and so having uh, having appointments uh, and and using that as a way to manage the flow of people, um, I think is important because it, it allows us to give people the experience that they deserve, and that's a, a relaxed atmosphere time and and no pressure to to race through the wines um, and i think if we if we weren't doing appointments we would find ourselves maybe a little too busy to offer that type of experience i agree with you i've been in the wine stores i've managed a couple of different wineries and um i've found that it is it's really hard when you have you know 15 people show up at once you're not able to give them that same personalized experience that you would really like for them to have it's not just about tasting the wine it's about the whole experience of learning about what you do and why you do it and getting to know you a little bit so i think mm -hmm. you're absolutely right about that i think most of the places that i went that had that i felt like i got some very personal service so that's yeah. that's probably and, a good trend and, and and being able to manage that flow as well is important because it's it's likely michelle or i that you're going to meet when you come to our tasting room um, we we do bring in uh, someone to help us one or two days a week just because seven days a week is a lot to work um, but another part of our experience is you're going to be, you know, meeting myself as a winemaker or Michelle as proprietor and, and getting that sort of inside, uh, inside track on, on our wines and our, and what we're about and, and why we're here. Fantastic. Well, that sounds like it's a, a pretty nice way to do business. And uh, obviously you, you must love it because you live right there. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. So um, before we wrap up, just I have one more question, and it's what's in Rob's glass today that may not come from Black Market, but your favorite BC wine? Uh, I'm kind of torn between two, so I'll, I'll give you two if that's okay. That's uh, perfect. I've, uh, I've been really enjoying 8th Generation's Classic Riesling, their 2018 vintage, which I think is now sold out. I might have got some of the last bottles. Uh, it's just a beautiful expression of, of, of very uh, variety correct uh, Riesling. Great petrol notes, wonderful acidity, a little bit of sweetness on it. Really, really enjoyable wine. And then uh, last weekend, uh, our neighbors um, from Birchbach Vineyard uh, brought over a bottle of One Mill Road, uh, the Pinot Noir from uh, Cynthia and David Ends, their new project. And uh, I was... Uh, Quite, uh, quite enamored with that Pinot Noir. It's a very, very beautiful expression of that grape. Um, it's a kind of old world in its character, but still that vibrant Okanagan style fruit. It's an absolutely beautiful wine if you ever get a chance to try it. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. It's uh, short and sweet, but we got some really great information. And uh, if you haven't had a chance to pop up to Black Market, make sure you stop by next time you're in the Caledon area. And I hope we get a chance to talk again soon. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thanks, Rob. Cheers. What a great guest. If you haven't tried Black Market Wine, you can find them online at www.blackmarketwine.ca. Or you can click the link in the description below. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the BC Wine Show and Podcast. If you like this episode, please subscribe and share with all your wine-loving friends. And don't forget to jump over to the bcwineshow.ca and sign up for email updates where I share tips, tricks, wine recommendations and recipes, and other cool stuff that I only share in email. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on the BC Wine Show.